Hi, my name is Graydon Blair from Utah Biodiesel Supply and today we're going to cover the biodiesel conversion test. This is a test that you can do to test to see if your oil has been reacted fully into biodiesel. To do the 327 test is real simple. We're going to take 3 milliliters of biodiesel that we want to test and 27 milliliters of methanol. We put it in this vial, we shake it a little bit, and then we look to see if there's any fallout. This is an example of a batch that had perfect reaction. Uh, there's no fallout in this batch at all. This is a, an example of taking just plain oil and putting in. You can see we have all three milliliters settling out. And then we have an example here of a batch that didn't quite react all the way and there's some puddling down on the bottom as well. This is an example of a completely passed test right here. Notice there's no fallout. This test has some fallout in the corner and this is just plain simple oil falling uh, in this batch. Notice how cloudy it is as well. The history of this test came from um, someone over in, in Europe that figured this out one day. And a group of people in the United States decided to see how accurate this test was. In a biodiesel lab, if you were to send your fuel in to be tested for total and free glycerin, they would put it in a gas chromatograph. And in this machine, they measure the um, total glycerin in biodiesel through a, a tool called a gas chromatograph. Well, a bunch of people sent a bunch of samples to a friend of mine, uh, Bob Armentrout, that um, had a gas chromatograph and he performed a 327 test on all of the fuel and then he performed a gas chromatograph test on it. And what he found is that if the temperature of the biodiesel was between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit as well as the methanol, then the results of this test passing or failing highly correlated with the results of the test passing or failing on a gas chromatograph. And so thereby, we have a very accurate but simple test we can do that is fairly uh, accurate to what you would get if you were to send it off to a lab. We found out that the test measures what are called triglycerides and diglycerides. In other words, portions of the oil where all three fatty acid chains are still attached or two fatty acid chains are still attached. They found that it's not terribly accurate at measuring monoglycerides, but the tri and the dyes, it was very accurate. If you pass this test and you do it properly, there's a good chance that you'll pass the total and free glycerin test, or the total glycerin test in a lab. So let's get started. To do this test, Utah Biodiesel Supply sells a handy biodiesel conversion test. This is called a deluxe conversion test kit. We have a bottle to put your methanol in, we have a 30 milliliter syringe, two 10 milliliter syringes, a temperature gauge to measure your levels of your biodiesel and your oil, and then several, uh, your biodiesel and your methanol, and several vials to do this test in. We're actually going to do the test in this. So this is our deluxe biodiesel conversion test kit. We also have a basic one, which is just three vials and a couple syringes as well. But they're very nice to have around. To do the test with this kit, we're going to need methanol, a vial that's about 38 milliliters, our 30 milliliter syringe and our 10 milliliter syringe and some biodiesel that we want to test. Open up your biodiesel to be tested. And you're going to suck out 3 milliliters of the biodiesel. So we've measured out 3 milliliters of biodiesel and we're going to put this into our little vial. And then we're going to measure out 27 milliliters of methanol. Now, I have a temperature controlled room. I've pre-measured the temperature of this biodiesel using this thermometer and it's about 71, 71 and a half degrees, so we're right on that limit. If you're warmer than the 72 degrees Fahrenheit, it's possible that unreacted biodiesel can dissolve into methanol and it'll make the test look like it passed when in fact it didn't. The next step is to get some methanol ready. I have some pre-measured out here. It's also important that your methanol be that temperature as well. Okay, so I'm going to measure out 27 milliliters of methanol. And now what we do is we simply put this into the vial. We cap it. And we just turn it a couple times and let it sit here for a minute. 
You see that little tiny sliver of fuel falling out? That's indicating that we didn't get a good reaction in this batch. What causes bad reactions are water in the oil, catalyst that's uh, going bad, not adding enough catalyst or water, not adding enough methanol, or it just didn't mix real well. So I can already tell that this is settling out quite a bit. I don't have the full three milliliters settling out, but I do have a fair amount settling out. So this batch, I would, I would, in, I would re-react this batch. This is a really good example of fuel that is completely passing this test. There's absolutely no fallout. This batch almost passed, but there's just a sliver on the bottom. This one has a little bit more puddling. I would call that maybe quarter of an inch. And then you have just standard oil that hasn't been reacted at all. So to pass this test, you want your fuel to look completely like this. You want absolutely no fallout on the bottom. If you have some fallout on the bottom, I've always been asked, well, can you burn it? And the, the answer is yes, because a diesel engine can burn vegetable oil. But if you're trying to burn completely reacted biodiesel, you want fuel that is has a complete reaction. So this test, while there's just a tiny little sliver of fuel, it still doesn't pass. And this test also doesn't pass because there's quite a bit there. My rule of thumb is in vehicles with uh, indirect injected engines, up to about a quarter of an inch you can get away with burning this fuel. If you have a direct injected engine such as a Duramax or some of the newer ones, um, you could probably get away with about a zero to an eighth of an inch, but no more than that. This has got maybe an eighth of an inch of fallout in it. Um, and then if you've got the really sensitive engine such as the Ford 6 liter or the TDIs or the newer, um, anything much newer, you really want to pass. So to pass this test thoroughly though, you really want a fully reacted batch. And uh, so this is an example then of the 327 test. So as you can see, this is a really nice test that you can do to see if your fuel is well reacted. If you get really well reacted fuel, congratulations. If you get fuel that is sort of reacted, you can re-react it using a re-reaction technique. I use about 30% of my original methanol and catalyst to re-react this batch. Um, depending on the truck this is going to go into though, it's probably not going to bother it. Um, if it's really like a 6 liter Ford, I would always, always, always make sure that it passes. If it's a, an old Dodge or a 7.3 Ford or a uh, power... Uh, a Duramax, you can actually get away with burning this. I wouldn't burn this fuel in a Duramax, but I would burn this fuel in a Dodge, and I would burn it in a 7.3. And uh, this fuel, well, this fuel, I just wouldn't burn at all unless you've got a uh, waste vegetable oil conversion kit on there. So that's the 327 test. If you'd like to learn more about this test, stop by our website at utahbio.com. We do have kits. We've got our deluxe biodiesel conversion test kit. We also have the basic conversion test kit and you can also pick up a thermometer while you're there as well. Some of our kits are gonna start coming with these, so thanks for watching.